Hello my friends, welcome back, this is Maltanen and today I'm very excited to be the first one to show you a new 3D camera tracker inside After Effects CS6. So let's jump in. A 3D tracker is my most favorite new feature in After Effects CS6 among of course the amazing hash cache and, 3D, and the new 3D capabilities uh, of After Effects. But let's focus uh, on the camera tracker. So I've got this footage here uh, that comes from Hollywood Camera Works. You can download it on their website uh, in the download section. And honestly, there's not much that I can do a tutorial on as far as this camera tracker goes because it's as simple as dragging it onto the footage and that's pretty much it. But before I do it, uh, I'm going to place this composition inside our final composition like so uh, because I just like to keep the footage uh, in a separate comp so let's just jump in and drag the 3D camera tracker and watch it do its thing. Uh, as you can see we've got the familiar message analyzing in background this is step one out of two the first one is tracking 2D tracking and the second one is 3D solving it's amazing how well and how fast this works. As you can see, the camera was already solved like immediately. Uh, and we've got uh, a couple of 3D trackers and a, some strange indicator jumping around the comp area. Uh, but let's focus on the uh, settings for now. Uh, we've got, of course, the track point size, which we can use to uh, orient ourselves better in the 3D environment. As you can see, the tracker did a pretty good job uh, everything sticks nicely, but to make sure how good the track is, we can twirl down the advanced uh, section here and we can check the average error indicator. This value, the smaller it is, the better. Uh, an average error of 1.04 pixels means that there's an average difference between the 3D solved points and the 2D tracked ones. So the smaller this value, uh, the better. Uh, but one pixel is not the end of the world. I think we can uh, go go ahead with that. But before we do, uh, I'm going to show you uh, some different uh, settings that we've got here. We've got method used. Uh, the solve method was set to auto detect and we've got three methods to uh, choose from. And usually when you just uh, apply the 3D tracker, it tracks the shot immediately and, and tries to estimate which method to use. And this one was called typical. Uh, and yeah, this is a pretty typical shot. Uh, the, other, uh, the other method is mostly flat scene. Uh, that means there's uh, very little parallax happening in the shot. And the third one is tripod pan, also called a nodal pan. So basically the camera is fixed in one position and it only pans from it. So Basically, there's no parallax in those kind of shots or very, very, very little, even less than in mostly flat scene. Other second settings we've got here is a fixed angle of view or variable zoom. Or even if we do have the specification of the lenses, we can specify the view angle. Uh, but usually what you want to do when you're doing tracking shots is to have a fixed angle of view, which means that the camera is not zooming in any way. Uh, so everything seems fine. Uh, as you can see our trackers disappeared and that's because the effect is not selected. If I do select it I get the tracking points uh, back. Uh, if for some reason you would like to have those uh, tracking markers visible at all times you can just click here uh, and choose render track points. So right now if I deselect the footage uh, it, the tracking points are still uh, visible. Uh, also, we've got another setting called target size and as you can see we've got this bullseye target uh, display when we navigate through our footage and that is basically what it means. If I increase this value I have a bigger target size. Uh, this is useful if the, the scene we are tracking has a really huge depth and in some points we might not even see uh, the target. So that's that. Okay, we've got the create camera option, but before we do that, I'm going to show you a uh, more convenient way of creating a camera, in my opinion, which is simply 
selecting some points on the plane. So right now, as you can see, if I only put my uh, cursor between three solved points, I get this uh, triangle area with the bullseye uh, in the middle. And that is the estimation of the plane that we're on. So right now, if I would like to create a ground plane, which is something that I tend to do uh, at the beginning, uh, I would just simply uh, choose this one, right? Uh, but to have even better results, it's good to select a couple of those markers manually. So I can just start dragging with my left mouse button and just select all the trackers that I'm interested in. And I can even add those in the back while holding shift. And this basically creates uh, an estimation of my ground plane. If I now move my mouse right to the bullseye, I can drag this uh, this target shield and see if my plane seems to be working as it's as it should. And right now I think it's a little bit off. See, it, it seems like it's a little bit curved. So I'm gonna look for a better uh, place to estimate my my ground plane. Maybe this one. Even though these are the same points, maybe this time it will be a little bit better. Maybe let's grab these one as well. Okay, this this seems this seems okay. So let's just click here with my right mouse button and I can simply choose one of the following options and let's just try with create text and camera and when I do that uh, the new camera is being created and a new text layer as well and as you can see now when I uh, scrub the timeline the text just sits in my 3d space like it should which is awesome I can now rotate it uh, for example 90 degrees that should be fine and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm using a new uh, 3D ray traced renderer, uh, which allows me to actually extrude the text, but I'm sure there, there will be many tutorials on how to extrude stuff popping up just as I record this tutorial. Uh, so I'm not gonna be focusing it on this uh, very much, but let's just extrude it and maybe add a uh, bevel. My favorite type is concave. We don't really see much right now because there are no lights in our scene. So uh, let's just add a light really quickly. A new light, spotlight. Okay, here we go. And now that looks just perfect. So let's just go ahead and uh, maybe let's get rid of this text for now and of this light and start uh, treating the footage. So I'm just gonna jump right in here and I'm going to do a quick trick to uh, increase the quality of the footage a little bit because I'm expecting this key to not be such a perfect thing. So instead of explaining what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna direct you to uh, Motionworks where you can find an episode which I describe exactly what and how and why I do things. Uh, so let's just jump right in. I'm gonna apply Channel Combiner and I'm gonna translate the RGB to YUV and I'm gonna add a uh, channel blur. I'm gonna blur the green and blue channel just a little bit and then I'm gonna apply channel combiner again and reverse the process uh, which doesn't really change much for the eye but the keyer likes this type of shots better. So I'm just gonna uh, call this one uh, green fixed. Now I'm going to uh, do a pre-key uh, for it. So I'm going to use color range uh, to do a very fast and dirty key uh, like this, just selecting all the areas like so. Uh, okay, that seems to do the trick. Uh, maybe we can also add a little bit of this shadow over here. Okay, that's better. Uh, and now we can actually use a simple choker to extend the green that we keyed out and we can call this fixed pre key uh, and now we can apply key light oh you know what no actually uh, before we apply key light uh, we can just very quickly uh, and very dirty uh, garbage 
uh, mask this shot. We already have a pretty tight garbage mat over here, but we want to get rid of all the extra uh, stuff that was going on in this in the scene. So I'm just going to very quickly animate uh, this mask like so. Okay, okay, move it over here further, and I think that's gonna be just fine. Okay, we can live with that. Uh, let's move one step forward and apply key light to the footage. And we're not gonna dive into uh, the keying process too much because we've got better things to do. Yeah, we've got some shadowing going on over here. Okay, uh, we're not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, I'm just gonna crush the whites a little bit, get rid of the blacks, have a really harsh key right now, but I guess it has to work. And uh, let's go back to our final comp. We've got our actress keyed out. And now we still have our 3D data on this layer. So that's exactly what we want. So I do have a pre-build pre 3D room uh, that looks more or less like this. And I'm going to use it and place it uh, in my final comp. So I'm going to drag it over here and click the collapse transformation and turn it into a 3D. And uh, now I only have to position it correctly, right? So because right now it sits somewhere, I don't know where. Uh, so let's just go ahead and click on our footage. Uh, I shouldn't have deleted that, uh, that text layer, but that doesn't matter. I can still go ahead and select my points. These and these, I remember they were sitting on the ground plane. So I'm going to maybe create a null this time uh, so I can keep it for reference later. And right now I'm going to use a new option uh, regarding parenting. I'm going to parent uh, my 3D room to this tracking null using a shift key. When I do that, uh, the room not only gets parented, but it also gets oriented and moved uh, and scaled according to all the parameters of the null. Uh, right now, I don't want to really uh, keep all the orientation and scale, so I'm just going to unlink it so the null stays as it was in this original position, but now I can manipulate uh, my room. So I'm going to rotate it uh, so that it looks like this. It should be rotated 90 degrees, and I can also scale it so I can basically put the actress in the room, and as you can see, it fits quite nice. And uh, maybe let's rotate it a little bit, uh, maybe scale it even further. Whoops, sorry, wrong parameter. Scale it, okay. We can uncheck the uh, uniform scaling and let's maybe uh, make the room not so tall. We can make it wider like that. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so right now, uh, the last thing I want to do is to create something to grab uh, the reflections. So to do that, I'm going to uh, basically create a new solid layer. Uh, let's just go ahead, layer, new, solid. I'm going to make it comp size. I'm going to turn it into a 3D layer put it below our room. Uh, that actually doesn't matter, but it makes more sense to me. I'm going to uh, parent it the same way I did uh, with the room. Now I'm going to unlink it and I'm going to scale it. Scale it really big. Okay, like that. That should cover the whole ground area that I've got here. And the only thing left to do is to go into the material options and turn on reflection intensity. And when I do that, hopefully, I will start getting reflections, but I do not. And why is that? I needed to put the layer above the 3D room, so uh, now that makes sense. Uh, let's just turn on our footage, and as you can see, now our actress is right in the middle of the shot, but for some reason, since we don't have the floor, uh, it looks, uh, you know, she's lacking her own reflections. So to fix that, I think we can actually go in here and make this uh, make a precomp out of this. Call it final key, 
And since this is a 2D layer, we can't really reflect it on our 3D layers. Uh, so I'm just going to fake it. Uh, let's just go ahead and fake it. Uh, let's unlink uh, the uniform scaling, go negative 100 on the uh, Y axis, reposition it and uh, blur it, directional blur like that. And we can... Uh, do something like that. Maybe even add a uh, adjustment layer. Let's just go ahead, layer, new adjustment layer, and apply linear wipe to our layer. Put it between those two. Uh, set the angle to zero, and now we can start uh, feathering it out. Okay. Uh, but I'm ex expecting this to go, yeah, it goes up, so I will need to animate the position of this layer. No biggie. Uh, keyframe. Let's move it down like that. Also, we need to uh, change the, uh, the linear wipe, so I'm going to lock this palette so I can animate it as I go. So like this, and in here layer should go down. Okay, it already did, but now I need to pull this feathering down as well. Okay, that looks good. And here we can push it even further down and maybe do this. Okay, that's more or less okay. So let's see how that uh, resembles in our final comp. Okay, that looks way better uh, as far as the you know reference in the 3D space. But there's something else that we can do uh, to make it look uh, as she's standing on something. We can change uh, in the material options of the ground plane, we can change the reflection sharpness, which will cause our reflections to blur. So let's try 50%. Okay, now that looks way better. Okay, I think I'm happy with that, but to uh, make this a semi-complete tutorial about new features, uh, I can't really uh, get away without doing some 3D type. So let's just do it like a boss. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just do that, turn it into a 3D layer, use the same technique, so, so parent this layer to the null using uh, the shift key, and now I can unlink it. I just kind of like doing things like that. Uh, rotate it 90 degrees. Increase the font size. Let's try 500. Okay, that looks better. Let's go into the material options. Uh, first, geometry options, yeah. Extrusion depth, uh, 50. Let's see how that looks. No, that's too little, 100. Still too little. Uh, 200. Okay, that's better. Uh, let's add a bevel, concave bevel, maybe 10 pixels. And uh, let's turn on the reflection intensity. That way, this will act as a uh, mirror text that's ma made basically out of uh, mirrors. Uh, let's put it in its correct position. Okay, okay, this is so sweet. Uh, and let's just move it up and push it back. We can make it float in space like that. Or we can leave it on the ground plane. That's up entirely to us. Just take a look at this. It took a couple of seconds to build this. I'm just so amazed that it works. And it works so well. I just I just love it. Fantastic. Okay, guys, uh, so that's it for this short introduction about some new features in After Effects. You can expect more uh, very soon, so stay tuned. Check out my website. Check out my fan page on Facebook. And uh, basically, just stay tuned. And I just can't believe how amazingly simple that is and how responsive it is. It's just fantastic. Love it.